than that. Let's give them another round of a hand. Let us bow our heads. Our Father and our God, we come at this hour to bring comforting words to this family. Uh, oh, Father, it's not an easy task, but it's one I've been assigned. Father, I ask that thou would build me up while I'm torn down. Yes, 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 yes. Speak through me that I might be able to speak a word to your people. And Lord, if you hear me at this hour, I'd be so careful to give you the praises. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 To the family and friends of Sister Bernice Avery, as we know her as B. We gather here today not to celebrate death, but to celebrate life, eternal life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Sister Avery, temporary life, temporary life here on earth is now over. Yeah. But her permanent life in heaven with Satan Jesus Christ has just begun. Oh, yes. If y'all wake up here and say amen, I'll be through in a few minutes. Amen. Well, I got the amen now. <laughs> amen. We praise God today for Sister Avery. New life with no pain, no turmoil, no setbacks has begun her new home that she looked forward to going to. Sister Avery was a woman that did not mind speaking her mind. But I will tell you this, she loved her pastor and she loved her church. I can share a couple stories that I think on it's funny today, but when she did it, it wasn't funny. I remember Sister Avery got her car towed. She had a flat tire and she was parked illegal and they towed her car. And they put it in the compound. And she called me three or four days later and says, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to get my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, okay, get your car. <laughs> Do you know Sister Avery walked from Almond Beach to Caroline Street in Daytona Beach to the compound with her spare key and waited for the police to go in. And as they left out, she drove her car out. <laughs> now remember that she had a flat tire. So she's driving on three tires and one flat. The officer is calling in pursuit, a slow pursuit. They pulled over at Volusia and Nova Road. And she said, call my pastor. I responded, I was on duty, and I came up. I said, Sister Avery, what are you doing? I told you I was coming to get my car. <laughs> so we fixed the tire, and we let her go. Then she came to the church on Mason Avenue. Y'all remember she had that get-around chair. Mm -hmm. She wrote that thing up Nova Road, put a red hat and a red flag, and came up Nova Road all the way to the church. I said, Sister Avery, you came. She said, how was, it? was I going to get here? <laughs> But Sister Avery loved the Lord. Yes, she did. I have a red town today because she liked red. That red hat she used to always wear. She would always get on me about the Bahamas. Uh, you need to call me tonight. You know what I want. And she would always talk about selling Avon. And I said, there ain't that much Avon in the world to get these kids to the Bahamas. She said, you just let me sell it. I said, all right, sell it. But Sister Avery loved these kids. I used to, some of them were so bad sometimes, I wanted to go and just take them away from Sister Avery. And she said, I got them. Don't worry about it. And she could can, she can take care of them. Amen. And she, I called her old lady one day. Y'all know what happened. Don't you ever. I'm not an old lady. I say, amen. God bless you. That didn't happen no more. She loved ushering. And one day I was preaching and I went to ask her to sit down. She said, I'm an usher. I can stand up just as long as you can. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Summerall told it right. She was bold and she didn't care who liked it. She told you what was on her mind. And I thank God that I had the opportunity. Before she died, I got to read a scripture to her. And pray about her as Sister Wild and Sister Edwards was around her bed as she gave up the ghost. But I'm glad to know that we got another soldier that's going home. Amen. 
I thank God that I had the pleasure to know her and work with her because she had a great love for her church. She had a great love for its people, especially the youth. As she grew older, she kept the dream of taking them to the Bahamas. I believe that her greatest joy was walking the aisles as an usher. We realize that we have been blessed to have this great saint in our midst. Family, you probably feel troubled at this time. But for, for, for a few minutes, I just want to challenge you with the words of, of Peter in 1 Peter 5 and 7. Cast your troubles upon him, for he cares for you. Cast your troubles upon him, for he cares for you. However, no matter how troubled you are, remember that you have a God who cares. He cares for all of us, no matter what our age is. If we look at the shape of the continents, at the ocean current, at the mountain heights, at the ranges, at rivers as they run, at the animal's life, at the vegetable's growth, our prevailing winds and color, all these speak of our Father's care for his children. Oh, yes. Not a mountain too high, not a river too wide, not a wind too pertaining to pertaining for his children. He cares for us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Paul one day asked the question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Is there anything that can pull us away from him? Paul lists some of the most frequently recurring powerful forces to life. Evils which confront human beings. Tribulations, tribulations diseases, persecutions. Nakedness, pearls, swords, physical handicaps, mental anguish, unjust treatments, as powerful and corrupt as these things can be. Paul says they cannot change God's attitude toward us. Yes, we are troubled, but according to the word, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved ones. He loved us. However, we are not delivered from the misfortune of death. Yet in all the ones able to find a blessing. Our sorrows explain our mysteries. Our tragedies become the source of our deepest understanding. We can not only defeat the powers of evil, but also we snatch the blessings from our tragedies. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, as I get ready to close, therefore, as a church, as we watch the life of our deceased sister and observe how she handled life's situation. She too can say, I have, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, oh, yes. nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, oh, yes. which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm. Nothing can overthrow the good which God <laughs> intends for us. Yeah. As I close now, family, cast your burden upon him, oh, yes. for he cares for you. Yes. Continue to pray with a smile. Yes. Know that your loved one is at peace. Yes. As I see you, I see her holding on to God's hand. Oh, yes. So I say to Sister Avery, sleep on in Jesus. Yes, yes. Sleep on, Sister Avery. Yes. I'll see you in the morning. Yes. I'll see you on that bright and good enough great day morning. I see you in the place where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. I'll see you in that place where there'll be no more dying. There'll be no more sickness. Oh Lord, I'm so glad today if you want to be like Sister Abram, you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I made up my mind, I'm going to stand up if I got to stand all by myself. I'm going to tell somebody to keep on serving the Lord. So if you got, you got to keep on, if you got a bell, keep on ringing it. Because it's the bell of the freedom. If you got a hammer, keep on hammering. Because it's the hammer of justice. If you're standing on land, then keep on standing the, because it's the land of the free. Uh, so I say to Sister Every, good night. Good night. I'll see you in Beulah Land. I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you in the morning. 
sleep on. I'll see you in the morning. Amen. Pleasant Heights Baptist. 